I'm Anthony Swafford, and I wrote the introduction to Joseph Ferris's A Soldier's Sketchbook. Tell us a little bit about your own book first, your own background in the genre of war recollections and stories. I wrote a memoir about uh, the 90-91 Gulf War, my time in the Marine Corps. Uh, much like Mr. Ferris, I, I was as well a uh, common infantryman, uh, part of a sniper platoon in the 2nd Battalion, 7th Marines. And my book is, as well, as sort of a ground pounder's account of, of what it's like to be at war. Uh, often the, the received uh, history that, that uh, or the public history that we have about wars is, is, is often told from uh, the general's purview. And uh, I felt that was lacking in the, in the Gulf War, in the war that I was involved in. And um, I, my impetus was to tell that story, to tell the story of the, of the guys on the ground, uh, the guys eating sand for breakfast every day. And that's what, that's what I uh, set out to do with my first book. And how have average people, ordinary Americans, reacted to you by telling the ordinary person the story of the war? Well, just, just as uh, Joseph said, uh, I have people come up to me and say, thanks for telling the story. Uh, thanks for telling my story. Um, I've had uh, veterans from Vietnam or Korea come up and, and thank me for, for writing the story about a Marine from the Gulf War. And I think that's because uh, one thing that's common, you know, where the fighting happens doesn't change that much. How the fighting happens changes a bit and the technology changes. But really, uh, the young people who do the fighting are, are not that different. One thing that uh, really moved me about Joe's book was the fact that as I, as I read his letters to his parents, uh, as, I, as I read about the kind of fighting he did and his training, I recognized uh, the, the same kinds of young men that I trained with and that I fought with. There, there were Joe Ferris's all over my unit. And uh, that, that's one thing that really moved me the first time that I dropped into Joe's book. It sounds like it's a story as old as time, young men going to war, similar issues and fears and it is, it's surviving. Uh, yeah, yeah there, there's a reason that we ask uh, you know, mostly young men to go fight and uh, because they're willing to, to go off and, and do that sort of insane co combat, that, that insane kind of employment, which is picking up a rifle and going to fight and, and possibly dying. And uh, I, I don't think that changes much from generation to generation. What is your appraisal of Joe's book, being with the illustrations and the letters? It's an interesting combination of memories. Yeah, Joe's book is great. I think it's it's working on so many different levels because of the letters home, and and, and you see, uh, you hear the the young Joe talking to his parents. Uh, this this really rich, close family that he came from. Uh, he's he's reaching out to them. He's telling them uh, how how things are how things are on the front. His training, and then eventually his, his combat. We have these marvelous sketches, and you know we know that he became you know a. a, a World famous cartoonist. He's 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 a an amazing artist, and so we see that that he's not only having an education, the education of a warrior, but the education of an artist. And uh, what's great about the book is then years later we also have you know uh, Joseph in his 80s uh, writing about those same scenes that we that we heard him narrate, that we read him narrate to his parents in those letters home. So it's it's a multi-dimensional book. Uh, we're getting the story on many different levels, and I think as a, as a historical artifact, it will be very important. You know, t today, so many times, um, the young people who do the fighting, that you know, they may come back from a firefight and 20 minutes later post something on Facebook or send an email home. And um, when my first book came out, uh, I started writing about 10 years after the war, and people would say, "Hey, what took you so long? 10 years?" You know, and here Joseph took a look over 60 years later, and and, and the story was still resonating for him. And uh, that that's what really um, that's one thing that I love about a soldier's sketchbook is it's, it's this this historical document about a war, and it's it's uh, it's it's a it's a different kind of telling about war than we might be used to today. When you see how other people take your story, as in your case with the movie, do you feel like you're detached a little bit from the story? Somebody else has taken it over, or do sure, you feel like I mean, a spectator at your own story? In, in the case of my first book and it being turned into a film, uh, I just tried to have fun with it. Um, I, I really trusted the guy who wrote the script. He was a Vietnam vet, and he just said, Hey, man, you sat around in your underwear for a year writing this book. And now there are all these guys, you know, there are 250 people trying to turn this thing into a movie. And, 
and isn't that a blast and, and hang back and have some fun and uh, you know in a way al already um, turning my my history into a memoir there was already some distance there was there was the persona uh, that I had to create uh, in order to tell the story and so this you know, whatever happened in terms of uh, the, the film was was kind of further distance from me and and, and the actual story. I'd really, uh, I'd really like to talk to Joe about the, the process of making the book and, and uh, so, you know, decades later, uh, what it was like for him to re-enter those memories and um, what, what he, what his memories were, his day-to-day -day memories of certain events and certain firefights and, and just the sort of psychological nature of being at war and uh, the young version of himself that he discovered in those letters, those differences, uh, I think, are quite important. And I'd love to talk to Joe about that. And uh, I'm just a, a big fan of the book. It's, it's, it's a great book.